Welcome to another episode of Tacoma FD. Tacoma FD. Yeah. Wow, that was good. That was forceful. That was noise. That was really good. That was noise. I mean, you didn't even need any practice. No, I just went right into it. You're professional, man. I feel professional. And, you know, I also feel hopeful. Why? Well, because, you know, so like we were told that our baseball hats cast shadows on our yeah, faces. Yeah, they do. They do. So, so we're wearing them back like this. Yeah. You got to wear them back on your forehead. Because if we were if we were backwards, then we're too bro -y. Yeah, that's a little too much. I mean, you could if you want to. But. No, but I don't want to be bro -y. And then And then you, you put them back like this. And then you look right. like, like... A little like boy? A, yeah, like a, a little kid who's going <laughs> fishing. Right? Sure. You show off your five head. Yeah. yeah I get it. I'm looking at you and I'm like, I'm like you look so young. Thanks. And happy and hopeful. Thank you. Uh, I went to the dentist yesterday. Are your teeth clean? My teeth are very clean, but I go there and they're always amazed at my, how nice my teeth are. Like, <laughs> again, they said, you have the teeth of a 27-year-old. Wow. That's what they said to me. Cut to... I don't know what that means. A mouthful of 27-year-old teeth? I guess. I mean, I, you know, I, I mean, I have the, the teeth of a young man. That's really great, Kev. And, you know, I don't even brush them, so what the fuck, right, guys? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Dental talk. Do you, didn't we have a... We had a riff about uh, Netflix shows, right? About like, and there was like, yeah, about like uh, the gentle. The, yeah, Jake Gyllenhaal plays a dentist. Ah, now as punishment, she's gonna binge watch Mental Dental without me. Oh boy, that's that show about the dentist in the insane asylum. Good show, Jake Gyllenhaal. Oh, Gyllenhaal is great in that show. He plays the dentist, Doctor Frederick Mental DDS. Tell you what though, that's not the best of the dentist shows. The best show is the one about the girl in 1904 Poland who becomes a boy so she could be a dentist. Yentl Dental. Oh, Ronda Rousey's excellent in that. She's so good. She's so good. That second number she sings. Now, uh, what's the deal? Why are you so sore? I've been I've been working out, bro. Uh, why? How, what do you mean you've been working out? I got one of those uh, home gym things for my garage. Okay. So I I put this thing together. It took me three days, and uh, I built this machine. Mm -hmm. It's got all the things, you know, presses and curls and yeah. chest, and the jiggle shoulders, machine. and yeah, it's got a big medicine ball that you go like this. With. Okay, a, yeah. a thing is stretch. Yeah. yeah, it goes like that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So I've been I've been I've been working out. Okay. Yeah. Pushing can, some weights. Can around? you tell? Yeah, dude, you're swole. How's my definition? How do my gains look right you, now? You, you got some impressive gains. You're swole. Thanks, bro. Yeah. I'm swole. Like, you got like a nice pump going right now. Did you lift okay. this morning? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you take some creatine? Uh, I didn't take creatine. Should I? Protein? Should, yeah. Well, that, that, that'll just make you recover quicker for those gains. <laughs> <laughs> you and I would make terrible bodybuilders, wouldn't we? I guess we? so. I guess so. Remember when we worked on Beer Fest with, uh, with Rolf and Gunter? Yeah, the real bodybuilders. And, and we'd be like, what was your diet? Um, like, di like when you were in training for a bodybuilding competition, yeah. they're like, I would eat 10 cakes a day. I know, you're like, wait, what do you mean? Cakes? What do you mean? Like, like cakes? Like, yeah, cakes. Yeah, like cakes. birthday cakes. Yeah, for carbs. You're like, really? Jesus. Yeah. And, and, and ate it, it, like 800 eggs. <laughs> and you're like... <laughs> 800 eggs. Wow, that's you know, a lot of fucking eggs. If I yeah. did that, I'd be in trouble. I mean, I know I came back from shooting Beer Fest, and I was probably like 280 pounds. Yeah. I had four chins. I know that. And you weren't eating cakes, bro. I don't eat cakes. I drink beer. You were drinking a lot of beer. A lot of beer. Anyway. Okay, anyway, let's talk about this episode. I would love to. Um, episode 12 of the season. It's Kangaroo Court, right? This is a fun one. Oh, this is a great one. This is one of those kind of like, um, we always want to stuff this kind of stuff into into a into an episode and we got to do it. And we got to stuff the stuff. And you directed it. I did. Uh, which was another kind of one of these, we've talked about this, but I was originally supposed to direct it. Correct. Then you got COVID. Right. We flip-flopped. And so uh, this episode, which I had started to prepare for, ultimately you ended up directing it. Right. And, and, uh, and you did a fantastic job. Thank you very much. Really fantastic. Thank you very much. Well, this one is near and dear to our heart. We wrote the script. We wrote it. Yeah, Heffern and Lemmy. And wow, my COVID really messed things up. Like, what do you mean? Well, I mean, if you think about it, we've been talking about since like episode six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. My COVID caused a huge ripple Send effect. Ripples. It was the butterfly effect. It really was. COVID. That's the definition <laughs> of the butterfly effect. Um, but yeah, this one's near and dear to our heart because we used to do kangaroo courts in college. And we should yeah. explain what a kangaroo court well, people is. People don't necessarily know. I mean, kangaroo court, when we did in college, it's kind of like you, you, uh, it's kind of a fun event where, you know, people like sports teams do it in locker rooms and, you know, we would do it in a fraternity, but 
you have a mock trial essentially where you bring up these silly offenses against somebody and then you uh, you stage a, a court case and you bring evidence, you have funny pictures, you mock things up uh, and then ultimately the judge decides and it ends up being like, you know, you owe 40 bucks or you have to chug 10 beers or yeah. whatever your sentence is. Yeah. And it's a really fun event. And, and we would do it every year in school. And we and give know, an example of a type of uh, typical court case that would be brought up in Kangaroo uh, Court. You know, it would be like, you know, for us, it would be like we accuse this guy of secretly being a member of a different fraternity. Right. Uh, and then you'd take, you know, pictures of him and you paste it into him at the a party of the other fraternity and you'd uh, yeah. have other kind of guys come in and testify that they saw this guy going into the other fraternity house, whatever. Just silly bullshit. You might fabricate some evidence. Right, you fabricate evidence, you do whatever, and it's a big laugh and everyone has a great time. It's really a show. It's a show. It's a show. And so, you know, we... Um, we know that, like, you know, sports teams do it when they have these offenses, like, you know, uh, somebody in the baseball uh, uh, in the baseball locker room stole somebody else's shampoo, you know, or whatever it is. And, you know, you read about those things, they're, they're funny events. And so, you know, we had asked Cousin Bill, our technical consultant, you know, if he had ever done that or these guys do that in the firehouse. And he said, no, we never done it before. No. Well, <laughs> but it's a pretty good idea. Maybe we will do it. Yeah, well, because there are crimes yeah. committed. There's firefighter on firefighter crimes. I bet... I bet stations do do it, though. Just because Bill had, didn't do it doesn't mean that people across the country right. didn't do like, it. Like, I'm sure somewhere there's a theatrical uh, <laughs> firehouse that believes in putting it on shows for It doesn't have to be theatrical to this level. No, but, but like, but but like, okay, so firefighters, what we do know about firefighters is like often, for instance, in the bathrooms, like... They'll steal razors, they'll right. steal shampoos and soaps and, return them. and creams and things like that. <laughs> and uh, That's firefighter on firefighter crime. Co to the wrecked. Right. Co wrecked. And like they'll steal each other's foods, you know, like there's like every shift has, has their own fridge. Yeah. And there are locks on each refrigerator right. so that because the other, not only will they steal each other's food, but they also might prank their food. Right. And so... But there are all kinds of things that happen in the firehouse. And so we, we thought that it would be funny to kind of put those together and then at the same time be able to do a silly mock courtroom drama with all the their drama and all the whatever. And, and so we headed down the road and then the idea was basically these silly little things turn into a real offense. It is with this weighing on my heart that I accuse Chief Terry McConkie of treason. Murmur, murmur, major murmur. <laughs> what? How? I am accusing you of being friends with the enemy, police captain Jerry Polanski. Murmur, murmur, murmur. Murmur, murmur, murmur. <laughs> murmur mammy, murmur. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah you sold the hell out of that, cat. Thanks, bro. Um, but I think, you know, one of the reasons why I was originally going to direct it and why we wrote it is because I have a legal background. Kevin Heffernan is a lawyer in two states. People don't realize that. They, they're like, wait a second, Farva is a lawyer? And it's true. Yeah. Kevin Heffernan passed the bar in New York and Connecticut. That's true. Um, it's funny because, like, he's not a good lawyer. No. And we discovered that when we had... Uh, That's why I'm not a lawyer. Right. I mean, I am a lawyer, but I'm not a lawyer. So, like, tell me about that. Crazy. So, so your law background, your father was a judge. Yes. And, and a lawyer and a judge, yes. For a lawyer years. and a judge. And yeah. so you were going to... Uh, he wanted you to go to law school. I don't think he ever pressured me, but I think he, he had designs on it. Yeah. So we got out of college. Yeah. And... Tell me, did we do sketch comedy first or law school first? Um, we did sketch comedy first, uh, and that was the idea. And then I worked at a law firm for a few years as like a paralegal. Right. And basically, that's just a drunk guy. Were you a good paralegal? Um, no. Yes, I was good. Tell but, us. Well, but I mean, like, you're not invested in it. It's not like you're going to be your career. You know, I was like a, a kid, you know, just out of college, hanging out, living with five dudes, getting drunk every night. And then you roll into work. And who? Disheveled, and you do the work you said to who do. Who was your go, boss? Who was your boss? Um, well, I got hired because a very close friend of ours who went to college with us. Yeah. Um, his name was Andy McCormick. Can I say that? Uh, well, and Jason Scher, too. There were two guys. There were two uh, guys who were lawyers in a very reputable Manhattan law firm. And um, and they, you know, suggested I come and try to get a job there as a paralegal. Okay. And so I did. So I worked for them. 
essentially, which was fantastic. Did you ever fall asleep on the job? I fell asleep on the job all the time. And how did you not get busted being asleep? Well, there are tricks that you do in an office, right? Like, and I don't know if you can do them now because office work is a little bit different, right? But like, you would do something like you take the phone, you know, like you're on the phone and you'd be at your desk and then you put your back to the door and then you put the phone to your ear and then you go to sleep like this. <laughs> and then so if somebody walked into the office behind you, mm -hmm. they'd, oh, I'm sorry, you're on the phone. And then they'd, they'd leave, right? So you'd never get disturbed. You'd do this, right? And I mean, then you'd get a nice, get a nice sleep into your, uh, you know, in the middle of the afternoon. That's pretty slick. Yeah. The other one I would do is um, I would go to one of those guys' office, like Andy or Jason, and, um, you know, they'd have their desk facing the wall. And because they were my friends and my fraternity brothers, uh, I'd say, I'm going to take a little nap in here, in your, in your room. <laughs> and then I'd lie down behind their desk chair uh, and behind their desk. So if somebody uh, uh, of importance walked into that office, they'd walk in and see Andy or Jason working at their desk. And then they couldn't see me because I was lying on the floor sleeping. Behind, on you're the crown you're what them. they call a good hire. I, I, you know, hey, the reality is I did my work well and I did it on time, but... Um, I partied a little bit. Okay. And so, well, I partied a little bit. But ultimately, I, uh, I, I finished that and I went to law school. Mm -hmm. And I um, and, uh, went to law school in New York City while we were doing sketch comedy. Right. And so um, uh, I was on two tracks. And then, what do you mean, two tracks? I mean, like, I was preparing to go become a lawyer while at the same time we were doing our thing, our the comedy showbiz thing. track. Yeah, the showbiz track. I see. And then, um, and then uh, I went to law school, and then uh, I, gra you know, I, I graduated. When you graduate, you take the bar exam. Yeah. And um, you usually take it like a month or two after you graduate from law school. We were starting to shoot our first film called Puddle Cruiser which you can find probably somewhere on Amazon or something like that. Yeah. And we, we put, together the, put together the money for our first film, and uh, we were going to go shoot it that summer, and it conflicted with the bar exam. And so I, I called up my dad and said, I'm, I'm, you know, Dad, I'm not going to take the bar exam. I'm going to go make this movie. And to him, it's like, you know, what the fuck are you talking about? You know? Right. He was like, you know, you don't take the ball down to the, the goal line and not cross into the end zone. What are you, crazy? Ah. Right? It's a and football said, metaphor. Yeah. And I said, well, you know, I'll take it, you know, I'll take it, you know, next next round, like next year. And he's like, yeah, sure you will, you know. Oh, boy. And uh, so we went, we shot the movie, Puddle Cruiser. And then uh, while we were editing it, I studied for the bar. And I took the bar six months later and I passed it. It's funny because, like, you know, as much as we chide, congratulations, by the way. Thanks, man. That was a long time ago. It really was. As much as we chide, <laughs> you know, we chide your father about his chicken, I have enjoyed lately... Uh, you know, some of his legal foibles, like when you guys uh, went to rent a car. Yeah. Now, your father is, he's a judge. He's a very reputable guy. And he's a lawyer and he's yeah. a righteous man. I remember like saying something to him about like taking the clothes home from uh, from the, the set. And he was like, that's graft. Yeah. And I was like, well, no, hold on, Mike. It's not graft. It's, it's for, he's like, no, that's called graft. He's extremely, extremely principled. And I was like, Mike, you're taking all the fun out of this. Yeah. And he's like, well, I'm just saying you're breaking the law. That's graft. Yeah. And I was like, Jesus, Mike, you know what? I'm not, I'm not going to tell you any stories anymore because you don't know how to f have fun. Yeah. But you guys went to rent a car. Right. So they came to visit here uh, and I picked them up at LAX and we decided, you know, let's get them a car so they can have their own freedom to drive around. And so we went over to the car rental place and uh, uh, I'm sitting out in the car while my dad's in getting the car uh, in the rental at the counter. And it's taking a little while and I end up and I walk into the, into the rental thing and there's this you know commotion there are people you know there's some problem and i'm like what's the matter and uh and this counter woman said well your your uh, uh your father has a fraudulent fed uh, a fraudulent state id mm. and i said what what are you talking about and they're like the uh this uh id has been tampered with and I said, that's absurd. This guy is a judge for 32 years. Here we go. He's the most principled guy I know. And he doesn't have a tampered with ID. And, uh, and she's like, well, it is. And I looked at him and I was like, do you have a tampered ID? And he like, he was, he was white. <laughs> like all the, all the color went out of his face. And he's like, uh, well, I was like, what do you, like, did you, did you fuck with your ID somehow? Tampered your ID? He goes, well, what happened was I got a new wallet, and the ID did not fit into the pocket 
that the wallet goes in, you know, of the wallet. So I took a scissor and I cut the license so it fit. I was like, you cut your driver's license with fucking scissors? He's like, yes. And, uh, <laughs> and I go, well, I guess you got a tampered ID. Mm-hmm. You're not supposed to do that. Yeah. He was, and he was denied uh, the opportunity to rent a car. Oh. And so I had to drive him around for that whole week. And every time he got in the car, you can bet your ass that I reminded him of his tampered with Oh, him. not only that, but you called me up and told yeah. me the story while I was on my way over to your house. I was yeah. like, oh, thank you, Kevin Heffernan. It's a fantastic and, story. Uh, like, I walked in there and was like, what's up, Big Mike? How's that driver's license, <laughs> bitch? Because he deserved it. <laughs> he did. Everyone wants to see the righteous man fall. Yeah, and with me, his face... Dostoevsky. Is... See, God. we don't fuck around on this podcast. <laughs> This this guy's this guy's smart. He's like Goodwill hunting. He's fucking. But I'll tell you what. Just can't get the water in my mouth. I'll tell you what. I'll yeah, tell you what. Yeah. We. Uh, I remember the first time we needed your skills as a lawyer. We. Yeah. Uh, it was the movie Puddle Cruiser that you're talking yeah. about, and we sold it to a uh, major television network. Yeah. And they paid us one of the big three what or are, four at the time. Yeah, maybe five because yeah. I think like like what. Wasn't like PBS, UPN, <laughs> UPN, and CW were also networks yeah, at the time. Probably, probably they were because we went and pitched them. That's true. But we sold we sold to a, a, a big one, one of the big ones, yeah. and uh, and so that they said, and, and this is like we had never sold anything before. Yeah, this is, we hit the big time, and they were like, "All right, we're going to pay you a lot of money to write a television script for us, and the way it's going to go is we give you an advance, and then the rest of it is something called a penalty fee or a kill fee, and what that means is after a year, like if they shoot this as a pilot, that's what you get paid." But if they decide not to shoot it as a pilot, you still get paid that, and that's the deal. And they have, right. and it's a year long contract. Mm-hmm. And so I remember I was, I was a waiter, and so like we, the advance. I'll just tell you, the advance was fifty thousand dollars. A guy? No, no, total. Oh, okay. Members, so uh, so <laughs> split five ways. Yeah, so okay. the advance. So it was ten thousand bucks a okay. piece, and to me, that's the biggest check sure, I've ever received man, that's in my good life. Money right there. Yeah, I quit my waiting tables job sure. in a fucking blaze, in a blaze of, glory. of glory. I. I I came into work that day and the manager was giving me a hard time. I untied that fucking apron and threw it on the ground and said, I quit. Eat a dick. Eat a dick. Suck it. Lick it. Stick it. Double dick it. And And so we all lived like kings, you know, for for, for a, a year. Yeah. No, for you, like okay. you know, okay. racking up. Like I, I, I went through that ten thousand oh, dollars. Yeah, 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 right, right, and credit card debt, and, and then credit cards because you knew the the payday was coming. I, I, it doesn't matter. We're either making this pilot, or I'm getting a, a big check, a yeah. bigger check. Yeah. At the end of one year's time, and at that end of one year's time, like nothing had happened. Yeah. And it was like, all right, well, where's our money? Where's the monies? And uh, and they were like, well, actually, there's a clause in the contract that says if we never actually um, commenced you to start writing the script, then we don't have to pay you that penalty fee. Right. And we all looked at Hefner. We were like, what the fuck, Jack? <laughs> You're the lawyer here. And he, and but now, in Kevin's defense, we had a lawyer. Yeah. Let me ask you this question: Were you paying five percent to a lawyer? I was. That was not me. Correct. To do their work on your contract. Yes. Okay. So then that's not my responsibility that this happens. Exactly. Yeah. But if we were doing something that required some knowledge of Argentinian culture, yeah. and we hired an Argentinian expert, and he failed to do his job, you would still look at me and be like, que pasa, bro? Right. Right. I would say that to you, but you would be like, what, like, I, like is my fucking fault? That's what that, you say. That's probably exactly how I would say it, too. Is my well, fucking is my fault? involved there? Huh? 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 Anyway, okay, so okay. he did pass the bar in I two did. states. He's not a good lawyer, though. Let's just get that out of the way. Well, I've never had the opportunity to show my talents. Well, you did that. Can we um, get to this yeah. episode? So, this, so basically, you know, the fact of the matter is uh, we wanted the opportunity to make a courtroom drama and do all the funny shit that it was. We did the black and white flashbacks, mm-hmm. right? We did the dramatic courtroom music, which Jason O'Connor, our composer, did. It was fantastic. Your Honor? The prosecution brings to the stand police captain Gerald McCraney Polanski. Yeah, right. He's actually here. <laughs> he took he took a lot of the of the regular tunes that we have in our episode, and then he put these kind of courtroom spins on them, which yeah. was wonderful. Drama. Um, we did the uh, this murmur, murmur, murmur thing. Very easy to get out of a traffic ticket when the passenger in your car is a police captain. Murmur, murmur, murmur. 
murmur, murmur, murmur. Well, we uh, that was always a joke amongst us. Yeah. Was that, you know, murmur, 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 <laughs> murmur, murmur, murmur. And then the funny thing is we scripted that in. Yeah. For characters and our, our actors, nobody understood that we actually wanted them to say murmur, Absolutely murmur. said the word murmur. They thought it was just like a murmur. Yeah, and how they'll be doing something like yeah. that. But we were like, no. Say we want you to murmur. say murmur, murmur. And there's and and we have takes where we would tell we would scroll through. Yeah. Different kinds of murmurs. Ooh, murmur, 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 he, he, his theory was that the, uh, the bailiff in every one of those courtroom shows, like, you know, People's Court and, and Judge Janey and all those ones is the same guy, yeah. you know, and it's the kind of, the kind of, uh, weary, uh, kind of black guy, right? Well, it's a black bailiff. Yeah. It was a character that he came up with, right? And so he would always do that character around the set. Yeah. And we're like, we gotta, we gotta work that character in. And this is what the, the ideal yeah. episode to put that in there. Thank you for your shampoo expertise, bailiff. Well, I appreciate your appreciation of my expertise. <laughs> <laughs> And it's the kind of wise, folksy guy who always knows how to, the right thing to say. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's always kind of commenting on what's happening in the courtroom. Sure. And he agrees with the judge. Right. Profusely. He is an expert witness. Overruled. <laughs> he is an expert. Yeah. Good call, Yana. He had his nose in that thing like it was another dog's ass. <laughs> yes. I think he could smell what he was thinking. <laughs> And he's also got wise ass comments and observations <laughs> about about what's happening. And I, you know, I think he he finally got a chance to do that on camera, and I thought that was pretty. Oh, fun. it was great. It was, it was great. great. Um, but uh, so we also had to make up these crimes, right? So uh, you know, one of the crimes, and you know, Bill always talked about this in the station, uh, was you know the guy who steals the shampoo. Mm -hmm. And so we we decided we would go off on that tangent and um, have a little fun with uh, Gabe's hair, Ike's hair, yeah, and do this little shampoo bit. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we did, you know, it was fun cause we got Gabe to do this kind of fluffy hairdo yeah, and then it was that flat hairdo and it was always that thing where you'd sit in the hair trailer and try to decide what the funny hairdos were for him. We and love ultimately our... fantastic. Uh, right. Lorna Reed did a great job. Great job, Kev. Great job. Um, the idea was let's, let's get to the main crime and the main plot was this kind of Terry Jerry thing where... You know, the great thing is they start uh, as a, it starts as a, as a funny, you know. As a joke. As a joke thing where Eddie's going to prove that Jerry and Terry, or that Terry is really friends with the guy they all hate, Jerry. I am accusing you of being friends with the enemy, police captain Jerry Polanski. And he heads on that road and then it comes to the, you know, you come to realize that it, they really are friends. Yeah. And the real crime comes to light. Well, and that's exactly how it would happen. It's like it happens in the cold open of the episode where Jerry actually, or Terry actually defers to Jerry and the right. police department and, and also have, greets him. Yeah, they have certain niceties. Right. All right, all right. Jerry? Terry. Nice to see you. You as well. What brings you out? Looks like we have a jurisdictional problem. Which uh, sets uh, Eddie off a little bit, but he doesn't think in a million years that there's a relationship between those guys. He just is annoyed. Right. It's uh, like in yeah. college, if you had said hello to somebody in a rival fraternity, right. that could be basis for a kangaroo court trial. Sure, sure. You he secretly wants is a member be. of that or wants to be a member of that fraternity. Exactly. Right. And so in this one, that was the kind of the nugget of it. And then it turned into the into the big thing. Right? And the theme, and the, the theme of it is that no one after 40 should make friends. I know. Look, I've always said there's no reason to make new friends after 40. Nothing good comes from it. Right, right. No one should be making new friends after 40. Right. That was the kind of thing. And that was the funny thing. We we talked about the writer's room. We were in the writer's room, and that was what people were throwing out. It's like, who how, who does it? How do you make new friends after 40? And then Mike Palteri, one of the writers, told a funny story mm -hmm. about uh, an incident that he had yeah. uh, with a random, like, making friends with a new person after age 40 and how it went awry. He was at a bar yeah. and hit it off with a dude at the bar. Right. They had things in common. They had laughs. Right. They decided they were going to get together again. Yeah, they exchanged phone numbers. Yeah, and everyone, let's, let's hang out, bro. And people thought it was it affected a lot yeah. of lives. Like, yeah. uh, like his best friend, his writing partner, Mike Colbert... <laughs> Was jealous. He didn't like it. Like, the, like. Well, he was one of the proponents of you don't make friends after forty, pal. Right. You don't make new friends after forty. Yeah. Now, now, but he's coming from a point of jealousy. 
Correct. Because all of a sudden there's this- Like who, Eddie Panisi. Right. Who's this other cat hanging around here? <laughs> and it's this guy. And then Mike Pelletieri's wife- Right. She thought it was strange. She thought it was weird too. And was suspicious. Right. Like who, who dis? Yeah. Who's this guy? Yeah. Who's this guy? A new friend? And Mike Pelletieri was talking about him all the time. Yeah. And ultimately what happened was she inadvertently cock blocked their friendship <laughs> right. because they got together and she, and she was like, so you're the famous so-and-so yeah, yeah. that Mike can't stop talking yeah. about he you. He won't stop talking about he you. He thinks you're the cat's pajamas. And then the guy got a little bit like, oh. He freaked out. He got put off, right? The new friend. Because I'm sure he was getting the same heat from right, his side. Right, right. You know, and yeah. I think ultimately it was like, you know what? Let's call this off. Yeah. Right? This but I, think, I think he actually ghosted Pelletier. Oh, he did? I think so, because I think Pelletieri okay. got hurt by it. Wow. Yeah. All the more reason not to make friends. Right, exactly. Right? But <laughs> so Pelletieri told this story in the writer's room, and then we all had similar stories of that. And it was like, you know what, let's let's go down this road a little bit and see what this happens when you have make friends after 40. Because it's true. You can't make friends after 40. I don't like, I don't like. But hold on a second. What? The irony of all this is that uh, you have uh, made friends after 40 with Kaler, with Jamie Kaler. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys have become very good friends after 40, you know, as a result of the show, new friends, where, right? Where you guys hang out and your kids hang out and your, you know, couples hang out. And we, it's, that's kind of an interesting. It's funny because I'm life Because it's happened. It's happened between you and Kaler in the last like year. I'd say it's happening. Okay, but I'm 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 defensive. I'm definitely defensive because I've I've taken a stand. Like I don't th I don't think I don't think it's possible to become friends with anybody after forty because I believe all friendships okay are made primarily out of convenience. Okay, I mean I'm sure there are people out there like convenience meaning you're in the same place at the same time. Kind of well, like, you, know, like you go to school together, you work together, you go to blah, school blah, blah. together. Yeah. You, you know, you're in high school, you're middle school. Like you see those people every single day. Yeah, you're in college, you live with those people. You work with people, then you're there, especially if you if you hold down can hold down a job. You're with people for four or five, six years, and you spend time with them. It's like that's how you get to know people, right? But like for me, especially in California, like if you <laughs> if if you know, it's like you have to make an effort to go see those people. Sure. And now I, I suppose if you're over forty, it could be you have kids and you're meeting other parents. That's what, yeah, I mean, that's where I think where the pool of new friends come right. from. But, it's it's but like, sports and school and that uh, your kids are in. But even then I'm like, oh. I mean, we made friends when we were 19 years old. We did. Right? Like, you know, if we met- And, and you didn't even like me. I didn't like we you. We weren't even but friends. But if we met tomorrow- No way. I wouldn't have time, bro. No way, bro. I don't have time to be friends with you. Uh, like we, we have, uh, no, uh, nor would I want to. Be. No, uh, no offense. Sure, and you're a great guy. And, you're a great guy. And I respect you and I appreciate everything you do. But no if chance. we met yesterday. Fuck you, bro. It wouldn't happen. No way. My wife would be like, do you want, are you going to hang out with that guy? I'm like, mm. why? <clears throat> no why? way. Why would I? Why? Where does he live? He, am I, I going to invest this kind of time in this new person? He lives four miles away. But I mean, that was the funny thing about the episode was to, to have those reasons why they hang out. So they go to the Leeway concert together. They go to the, they go to the, um, they get caught with the red light camera. You know, we do all these little things. Arts and crafts. Together. Arts and crafts. They go to the Arts and Crafts Fair and they buy a wicker basket. Yeah. You know? Um, and then the smoking gun of this episode, which was a, a funny real life thing. The smoking gun of this episode is that it turns out it's that Venmo. It's Venmo. Yeah, and that yeah, yeah. your transactions are visible on Venmo. I remember talking about that in in the writers' room. We're like, "Holy shit! This is a this is a great smoking gun." Terry, are you aware that Cashmo allows you to view your friends' transactions as well as your own? How? That's just the way Cashmo works. Everybody knows that. Why would they do that? Social media. It's not social media. It's banking transactions. I'm kind of a luddite in that world, and in, in that I didn't have Venmo. And I didn't know how Venmo worked. And when it was explained to me, I was flabbergasted. Yeah. I mean, literally, I was like, you're telling me that other people can see the shit you pay to third parties? Yes. I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, why would you fucking do that? And then like, like, I don't give someone the password to my bank account so they could see what the fuck I pay these people. Right. But like, it's- Because it's social it's media. Social media. And it's the, it's, I guess it's the bastardization of social media in the sense that to, it goes to the extent where you want to see, you know, that I reimbursed you for a coffee or something like that. I don't know what the fuck it is. Like, it's like. Well, this is a generational difference, Kevin. It doesn't, it's, and, you know, violates all the sense of privacy and 
I don't know. You can see him fucking make, how make sense to me. worked up he is about. This. I got really worked up about it when I found out it was real. Now, I have Venmo now, but I turn off that. Well, and that's that the thing. thing. So you know? it's like, look, you had to see my transactions. Look, he's just muttering. He's muttering now. He can't stop. <laughs> but that's it, Kev. You know, you had your online banking and people would, you know, send checks to each other. And then somebody was like, let's make it fun. I guess. But what, like you're bragging that you paid so and so. For a wicker basket? I mean, that's, is that what it is? It's like you want the world to know that, well, you, <laughs> that you gave somebody money for, see, uh, you know, the local raffle uh, ticket or something? Well, or only, because, only because uh, only a real <laughs> stiff would write exactly what the payment is for. Like, I paid uh, my friend Eric Levy $200 for fantasy football the other day. Right, right, okay. But instead, I wrote $200 for cheeseburgers from McDonald's. Okay. And you so it's a joke thing. It's a joke. And so people, you'll see now there's a whole thing where people are trying to make jokes. You're like, oh, for, okay. you know. For, for a blowjob. Massage you know, with whatever. happy ending. Yeah, wow, okay. wow, wow, wow. Right. It's hysterical. Yeah. Okay. Well, look, this is, this is, you know, this is the thing. This is the crux. I just like to keep my banking transactions as banking transactions. Great, That's bro. All. So don't I mean, fucking use a, Venmo. And I, I turn that thing off. You should. But I tell you what, it became a great... Uh, Smoking uh, gun. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be a great element uh, to use here. Uh, what else do we have in this episode? We had Vicky, who was great. She's so good in it. Uh, Heather Major was so good in this episode. Um, we had fun shooting this episode. It uh, was fun. We got a whole thing with this Mike Penkenton thing with her. Terry, who did you go to the concert with? Mike Penkenton! Who is this in this picture? It's probably Mike Penkenton. Mike Penkenton is not a white guy. You know, we always have these problems, right? We make up these names. Yeah. And you put them in the script, and then... It comes back the day of that they got dinged by legal yeah, because like, you can't use the name. Like Richard Gherkins, Richard Gherkins got dinged and we right. had to flip it to Gherkins Richard. Hello, everyone. I'm Gherkins Richard. In the early days, we'd be like, oh, fuck. And then we try to think of another name. And now we just make up the silliest name that we can think of because there's no way uh, that they could do it. You know, in our Christmas episode, we had to find a guy name for this kid who steals the doll. Yeah. And uh, we called him Mark Bud Martin. Great to see you again. Mark Bud Martin. You're the little Bud Martin baby? <sighs> Which is like, you know, there's no such name as Bud Martin. Nobody's but, a mid last name Bud Martin. You know, here's the silver lining, yeah. is that, uh, you know, one of the reasons we enjoy doing this job is because it's fun. Yeah. And every now and then, I remember looking over at you, Kevin, in our office, in our dual office, and you'd be chuckling. And yeah. I'd be like, what's so funny? You're like, Bud Martin. <laughs> I, I just, this is a funny name, Mark Bud Martin. You'd be, you know, making notes on the script. Like, stupid ass name. Mark Bud Martin. Yeah. And we found another one. Mike Penkenton. Mike Penkenton. Kenten, Penkenton, whatever. It doesn't even make sense. And, um, and then every time we said it, everyone would laugh. Maybe it's Mike Penkenton. <laughs> other one, other fun thing was the opening scene. Right. We the, did that bar. So, because this was a, a, a two for one here. It was a twofer. Because yeah. one, it's the inciting incident for... Right. We needed to get our local cops back in here. Got our local cops and we need Terry to be nice to them. But this this story actually came, I believe, from a firefighter named uh, uh, our friend Jason Patton. Yeah. Who does the Firefighter Chronicles and is one of the, the partners of, of Fire Department Coffee, FDC, yeah. that we, we feature in the show. And he's been friends with Stipe, uh, Miocic. And, yeah. Um, but he told us about this incarceritis, mm -hmm. which is that sometimes, uh, you know, in, in the rival, you know, we'd like to pick his brain a little bit as well as Cousin Bill, and, and uh, he was telling us about the rivalries between the police department and, you know, sometimes when they get these disgusting guys yeah. who are covered, in this case, uh, in their own urine. Which a lot of their real stories are about that, and we can't use it in the show, is just people covered in all kinds of various fluids and shit. Yeah, you know, substances. Which you're like, Ugh. I don't want to dwell on that stuff. Yeah, in our, in our comedy show, right? Exactly, it's just gross. Yeah. But like, but that is a big, a big bone of contention between the police department and the fire department. Something like this, where these guys, like, people will call the fire department for derelicts, but it's really the fire department's job to to take them in if there's a medical situation, and so the right. cops will basically give these uh, give the derelicts the 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 the, 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 the get out of jail free card. <laughs> you heard it. Chest pains, or as I call it, incarceritis. No, no chance. We're not taking these guys. Absolutely not. No, he's right. We gotta take them. And we thought it was a, a fun way to start the episode with these two departments. You just come in on them, and they're just jawing at each <laughs> and they're other. They're fighting over these two drunk guys who just left some sporting event. And uh, but those, uh, and that, those guys were great. The guy, um, Mark Sipka, he he, the guy with the mullet. 
Like right around that time that we shot that thing, he must have been in like ten commercials. Like he's in that State Farm commercial with, with Mahomes, Patrick Mahomes yeah. and uh, well, you know, he's just such a recognizable guy. He was talking about how he grew that mullet, and as soon as he grew that mullet, he started getting all these yeah. offers, you know, <laughs> which is funny. But he was super funny, and then the other guy was Tony Robinette, who was very, very funny. Oh, also. the two of them worked great yeah. together, and it was great because Tony Robinette, uh, his. You know, so so they're fans of the Tacoma Terriers, who yeah. I believe might be the minor league soccer team. I don't know. Did we make that up? I think we did. I think okay. it's part of their their lore. Okay, right. right but right. Uh, so they're the T and the R, I believe. Yeah. And um, and and Tony's <laughs> hit the the ink, his letter started to get caught in the creases of his of his Joe. Yeah. You know, we cast. We, I mean, he's a great actor. But, but if you remember, it was a hot fucking day. I mean, it was August, summertime in the valley. Right, it was August, and so the ink, the paint was running and and smeared between the creases. Yeah. And the makeup artist, after the first take, ran out. Amy there. Sparks, she got she got a little upset. She <laughs> wanted to redo it because whenever your makeup gets fucked up or runs or whatever, that's their job. And they're like, oh, I gotta fix it. But in, in our minds, it's like. Yeah, hold on. We were like, do not touch yeah. that. It's a it's a perfect it's touch. Wonderful that his. Uh, his sweat was being affected by the crease of his stomach. His paint, his paint has, <laughs> has been melted by the crease of his of his belly. We thought that was great. Uh, that was fantastic. Um, um, they did a great job, those guys. That's they were great. great. That, that was, was a, a tough day to shoot, though. It was uh, it was loud. It was loud. There's a lot of fucking people. It was hot. Yeah. Yeah. I was think there were eleven 12 people. Characters? Twelve. Eleven. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. And everyone's um, shouting at the same time, and there are a lot of you know. Well, we'll talk about it. There are a lot of people improvising off camera. <laughs> And the sound guys, you know, I think we've talked about it before. And this episode was was one of the ones where the, the sound guy David Alvarez, yeah. uh, our, our Venezuelan, by way of the Canary Islands uh, sound sound engineer, uh, he gets very angry. Yeah, he was like, "Can we have the silence off the camera, please?" <laughs> <laughs> because you know you have to have the dialogue clean, and we're yeah. like you know, but they have to be you know overlapping each other, and uh, but so there was a lot of that, and There's I was a ton of that, and I like I tell you what, I appreciate it more because you know when we get in the edit room, and, and I I've been doing it myself, and I've been working on some of these gag reels and some of these deleted scenes. It's like you know uh, every character has their own track, their soundtrack, right, right, because each one has an individual mic on them, and um, when you open that up in the editing uh, software. It's just like lines of, of, of uh, you know, sound waves, Yeah, you know, and um, usually you get four of them, you know, or whatever, six of them, you know, but when you open that file up, mm. it was, it's stunning. Like just, there's, the, you know, there's like 12 different mics, two uh, room mics, whatever. And it's just like this, you can see, you know, probably what makes the sound guy, you know, David's head explode yeah. is the amount of you know, microphones and sound and a scene like that. People don't necessarily appreciate it. It's that. a mess. It's, it's a, mess. a mess. But, you know, look, uh, on, on another note, because of COVID protocols, we never got to see David because he's, they kept him in zone B. <laughs> he wasn't, he wasn't in zone A. Right, so all his complaining was, uh, just went to, against a wall somewhere. Yeah. But anytime. He couldn't do it to us. These guys, they don't care. But and when I have we're, 12 fucking microphones going on. And 12 tracks. It's unbelievable. They don't respect the sound. I respect him when I get in the edit room. Of course, of course. But then on a day like today when we're on location and we're outdoors, he got to be in zone A. And so then you could sure. hear him bitching. Yeah, and you could see him storm onto the set yeah. and yell shit. Yeah. yeah. We got some deleted scenes. Say what? We got deleted scenes, guys. I want to see deleted scenes. Deleted scene. we, uh, there are a couple things in this thing. Um, there was one scene I know where we were going to a call. Yeah. And it was kind of supposed to ramp up this anger of Ike and also could to give the specter of maybe I'm hiding something from you uh, in my and, and and so we shot this scene. It was also like we felt like, oh, we need to get out of that room. We need to get out of that courtroom and breathe for a second. Yeah. And then once we got into the shooting of the or, or the editing of the episode, it was kind of clear that we needed the time and the space and that, you know, the things were working out so well in there that you didn't necessarily need. Well, but I think you know, uh, the breathing room. We I, had good breathing room uh, in a couple other scenes. So. Breathing room, but I also think that, I also think that this was, and I, I forgot. To, I'm glad you brought this up. This is uh, an exercise in good writing, in good screenwriting. Ooh, ooh. Who wrote this episode? Because we did. Okay. But you had the idea that you had the idea for because originally the hair thing was just going to play out in the courtroom, right? But then you realized that there was really only courtroom stuff. And we kind of needed a B-plot. You, you kind of want a B-plot to break up the action. Yeah. And, you, and you suggested that the B-plot should be that Ike is going to try to clear his name. Right. And because, and then that ultimately gave rise to that part of the plot where it turns out it's Eddie who's been using the shampoo. 
right in the end and there's chaos right, right, right. And, 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 and everyone was using and it. everyone's yeah, yeah, been yeah, yeah, using yeah, yeah, it but yeah. but that worked really well because it also became a really funny plot line we've got ike yeah. storming into eddie and lucy's that lunch scenes one of my favorite scenes we have some oh, i'll show you in the outtake reel we have some good stuff so we've got outtakes today too yeah, we got outtakes too we got this deleted scene uh it was called scene six in the shooting of it and it was uh us kind of storming out to go to this call uh, and, um, you know, it ramps up Ike's anger a little bit and a little bit of the mystery between us. Mm -hmm. uh, ultimately, we took it out for time and space. But um, I don't know. Let's watch. We'll see if it was worth it. You know what? Hey, Luce, I am not the criminal here, okay? You understand that? Ike, you got caught red-handed, and your awesome-looking hair is the smoking gun. Okay, I do appreciate the compliment, but God is my witness. I'm going to clear the crystal name, okay? Oh, so it will be crystal clear? What would you say, Mickleberry? Nothing. Let's go. Let's go. Come let's go. on. Hey, it's Thursday. Blobby's barbecue day. You want me to order? Oh, sorry. I have other lunch plans. What? Instead of our Thursday Blobby's? I got errands to run. Okay, your loss. Have fun out there. Oh, he's got something to hide. Wow. Terry's got something to hide there. Wow. Who's well, he going to lunch with? I don't know. I think Kaler. I think uh, Polanski. Jerry Polanski. So that was, uh, you know, that was the least. I guess, you know, you don't really need it. You know, it's another thing of uh, nice hair. Um, but you know, he didn't need it, so we dumped it. It was one of the last things to yeah. go. The other one we did, which you were a big fan of, and um, we ultimately cut it and it hurt you in your heart, was um, we had this kind of uh, act out scene where uh, you know, you go to commercial and um, somebody raised the specter of uh, you know, the crime that was committed here, uh, required you know, the feds to come in, mm. and so it was a question of everyone once the issue of the feds were brought up, everyone was shocked that the feds might come. Come and investigate this it's case. Big deal. It's a big deal. Uh, and so we had this kind of very uh, melodramatic the feds uh, thing on the end of this. And, um, and we cut it together and ultimately thought maybe it didn't quite work. Let's see what it looks like. Let's see what it looks like. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah, we don't arrest people for treason. You need to call the feds. The feds? The feds? The feds? The feds? The feds? The feds? The feds. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna stand by that. That's okay. Being on the cutting room floor. I, I just. I mean, I, you, you would have dramatic <clears throat> music with that, certainly. But right. you know, I, I think. Uh, so you know, while I've been giving you credit for coming up with that uh, that B plot there, I would also like to take credit for. Uh, uh, this is also a, a, a display, an example of of good quality collaboration. Okay, oh. because yes, I was very attached to this, <laughs> but I let it go. Even though I stand by how much I like that. that no, it's says, fun to watch, and I'm glad that we have a place to watch it here. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, we have a guest. Um, uh, so let's go to our guest. Uh, joining us uh, on Talk Coma is our friend and your new friend, uh, Mr. Jamie friend. Kaler. My best friend, your, are you jealous? Your best new friend. No, I'm not. Uh, you should be. I should. Be. Yeah. <laughs> no, I am not. He's going to replace you. Uh, well, I doubt it. But okay. What if What if you see Tacoma PD uh, created by uh, Jamie Kaler and Steve Lemmy? Well, I'll be happy to to uh, cash the check on that one. <laughs> oh, we'll have to come up with another title yeah, then. I guess so. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, always a pleasure. He joined us, and we did a little interview with him. Let's check it out. <laughs> Everybody, ladies and gentlemen, welcome, please, now to Talk Homa FD, our dear friend, Jamie Kaler. Yes, uh, Captain Jerry Polanski of the local That's police right. force, mm -hmm. the, the local Tacoma yes. police force. The TPD. Um, I was looking at uh, eight episodes he's been in. Get guy. the fuck out of here. No. Eight, eight, eight episodes. Eight. Is that great or what? Is it two per season? Is that what we've done? That's um, my allotment. It's two per season. That's my... That's my quota. Although That's I was the ginger like, quota. This um, latest episode, this 412, this kangaroo court, we introduced his middle name in it, though. McCraney. Yeah, Gerald McCraney. I know. It made me laugh so hard. <laughs> All right, Your Honor, the prosecution brings to the stand police captain Gerald McCraney Polanski. <laughs> <laughs> You're learning a little bit more about Gerald. Polanski each time, and it's beautiful. But that, you know, we, we stole that name from uh, one of our writers, Jessica Polanski, one of the writers. Polanski, yeah. Yep. That's well, that's what's Polanski funny. The name. first time when I booked the first show and I came to see you, because my wife's maiden name is Polanski. I, I can't even believe that. I find that so incredible. I, I asked you guys if I could change it, and you were like, unfortunately, you cannot because it is the name of one of the writers. But why would and you I, want to change it? Oh, you want to change it to Polanski. No. I thought it would be hilarious that I had my wife's right, maiden right. name was okay. Polanski. Oh, got it. Polanski. Because even like her old friends, they still call her that. They're like, Polanski. Right. 
It's such a good name. That's it's it's like a, you got to call that person by their last name. Yeah, yeah. I watched the last two episodes and they are yeah. blindingly funny. You know, it's here's my one my one problem <laughs> with the show. Yeah. And it's not really a problem. Not it's enough a compliment in a way. Yeah, not enough well, I mean, that's, I'm not, dude, I'll, I'll pull out the letters. I get letters every month. For the love of God, why isn't there more Kaler? You've, we got to right. have more I Kaler. Know. I know. Um, here's the problem is I was on set yes. and I, listen, the script is gold and it's ridiculously funny and the storylines are so, <sighs> here's what I also love. You guys let the guests all have their moments and be funny and they're not just like feeding you guys setups for punchlines. Like it's such a conglomerate of funny that it's awesome. But I saw so much improv that made me cry with laughter. And unfortunately, in cable television, you're limited by time. And so I yeah. can see the editor, you two, are sitting. You must be sitting there going, oh, my gosh, we have to lose so much of this gold and jokes and just the the fodder, I mean, Gabe is doing crazy stuff, that a, when it yeah. goes to HBO Max, my hope is that you can do extended director's cut yeah. Zack Snyder versions of them and let everyone see the blindingly funny improv that happens every day when you guys shoot. I wish. I mean, you know, I think we can do it with you know outtakes and things like that, but and but the pro that's the problem. And, you know, this is where I feel... I feel guilty. You know, we had Soder on recently, and I feel guilty with you. It's like you're there... There is so much funny shit. There's so much funny improv. And I know what's in there and what's not in there. And I know when you watch it, you're going to be like, where the fuck is that thing? Because we were dying <laughs> oh when we did that. And you, At the craft fair alone, I was like, I said, could have been a standalone episode. It made me said, laugh so hard. There's so much improv in that craft fair. Sand and fog. I'd bet anything. Oh, 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 oh. Huh? <laughs> nailed it. A nose nose. You have quite a nose for candles. I do. You know what I like about this candle? Mm -hmm. Double wick for the slow burn. Yeah. Double wick is awesome. Once you go double wick, you cannot go back to single wick. You're right, you can't. You're you, totally right. You can go up. Yeah. Triple wick it. Yeah, you can't go down, though. No, you don't. Because <laughs> that would be ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> when you get to it, that craft fair, it's got to be one minute long, that scene. You know, that's how long it is. And, you know, yeah. we have we're, we have a 24-minute show to the frame. And you get in there and you, you have to, you know, tell the story and whatever it is. And you got, uh, you know, nine characters. And, you know, that opening scene where you guys are at the bar, uh, outside the bar with the drunks. I mean, there's 11 characters standing around in a circle. Yeah. And we have one minute or two minutes and everyone's got funny shit. And that, it hurts me that we can't use all well, that I'm shit. Well, not just 11 characters. Uh, it's I'm going to say 11 actors <laughs> who all like to improvise. That's right. <laughs> And even off camera, when they're not even on frame, people just riffing where you're like, you know, that's unusable, right? You're not being captured by a camera. At Correct. This we will we will be speaking with John Rudnitsky about that <laughs> moment. Hey, I wasn't naming names, but John Rudnitsky is the king of off screen yeah. improv. Yeah. Like not if on that camera. if he you're not on camera. No, no, on camera's not not there. But, but let's, off camera, he crushes it. But to be fair, to be fair, yeah. Uh it's not just him. You know, like no, it's everybody. Like it's you, literally everybody. If you think about the craft fair, look, I'm wearing my shirt from the craft fair. The one of the challenges, one of the the pieces of the puzzle is that a lot of improv is coming still from uh, off camera. Yeah, yeah. And you have to figure out. We have to remember it, and it starts getting longer and longer each time because we start remembering all that stuff, and then yeah. we start doing more and more. Like, oh yeah, we do doing bits on candles and fucking uh, mushroom caps. I mean, there was like, I you know, I, I was listening to all that stuff, and it's like funnel cake. I mean, there's so much shit oh, that we were doing that and homemade so much. and homemade animal hats. <laughs> I mean, oh my god, I forgot about uh, the animal hats. Where are they? Right. They weren't in it. Also, there's a booth back there with homemade sleep masks with animal faces on them. I'm talking like owl eyes, raccoon eyes, and whatnot. Shut up. They've got a tiger, they've got a pond, they got everything. Zebra. Elephant? Yeah, they've got an elephant with like a thing. Uh -huh. It's so funny. Do then you realize it's your button scene, it's one minute long. And Correct. Like, what the fuck are we doing? Uh, the only thing I was upset about was the urine joke. I really, <laughs> I was, I mean, I, I. I think thing. it was he's covered. Like, he's going to be upset. He's going to be upset about the urine joke. He's I think it was officially covered on every camera that was anywhere within a three block radius of that set. <laughs> oh, yeah. I believe. I'm talking about urine. Do you get it? Yeah, I got it. Oh. It's my dad. Jamie had a a, a line that said uh, it was when he's walking away. Oh right. From you know, it's it, we've got the uh, incarceritis moment. Right. Where I think uh, Jamie started substituting his own joke in there. He's yeah. like, "You hear that, guys? You're in." Yeah. You're in. <laughs> right. Looks like you're in. Looks like you're <laughs> in. And 
I, you know, I'm not sure. It's funny because even at this moment, I'm not totally sure of what your honest uh, opinion is of the joke. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but on the day, on the day, you know, Jamie was like, "That's good," and I'm like, "Yeah, it's good." But we do have this incarceritis joke that we've written. Like the whole scene is based around that uh, that word there. So just know that you're, you know, competing with that with that important line. You heard it. Chest pains, or as I call it, incarceritis. No, no chance. We're not taking these guys. Absolutely not. No, he's right. We gotta take him. That's fine, because Jamie felt so strongly about it on on his close-ups. He kept doing the urine joke, and on wide shots, he was doing the urine joke on right. other people's close-ups. You'd see him in the background walk by and go, hey, Panizzi, you're in. <laughs> Honestly, when I saw myself saying incarceritis, I was like, I don't remember saying that line. <laughs> I don't remember. I don't remember that line ago. at all. Yeah. Well, because you probably only said it on one take, and that's the. Take <laughs> it was literally one take <laughs> to the point where I was like, "Well, they can't use that's unusable." Oh, they did use it. Oh my gosh! Yeah. I thought urine was going to be in. And the reason why you um, the reason why you think it's in the episode is because you watched it said probably like fourteen times. Okay. So it's live. It's, it's ingrained. Oh, more, way more than that, way oh, more. Dude, I did an American Housewife. I threw it in there too. <laughs> I that just do it. anywhere, any show, any. I'd say it on stage a lot. I just, I just love the joke, so I keep, I keep. American it'll work. Housewife. It'll work away. Can we talk about American Housewife? Yeah. What, what, what I, about? I don't it? think we can talk about. It. I'd like to talk about American Housewife. Maybe you know we'll cut it. We'll, you know we'll cut it if it becomes inappropriate. But you know. Uh, we had an amazing thing happen. A very powerful moment happened with Jamie Kaler uh, back in season three. Oh no! Are we are we going into are we going into details? Are we okay. talking about COVID? We are, are we talking, talking about this. We are talking oh, about COVID. All right, let's talk about it. Let's talk. Are we going to get ever, into it? I don't know if we ever talked to it on microphones. Have we talked about it. We ne no, we've never recorded oh, it. Wow. That's for certain. Oh, okay. This is great. honestly, I still have PTSD from it. But <laughs> season three, <laughs> season three mm -hmm. of Tacoma January twenty twenty one. Mm -hmm. It was January 2021, right? It yep. was at the height of a, it was pre-vaccine. It was at the height of the COVID we, second mm -hmm. surge. We resumed. We, we began were, to shoot season three of Tacoma FD. Yeah, true. High, high COVID protocols. We had gotten through about six weeks without incident, and it looked like we were going to make. Like we were very, we were in good shape. Well we oiled shape. machine. Yeah, but the, but the protocols were, were relatively high at that point. I mean, there were yeah. you know we were testing everyone every day and and. Were you? Well, were you testing everyone every day? Well, so what happened was Not so quite. there was a there Almost. was there was a, a problem with another actor, the scheduling of another actor, and we had to shuffle the schedule. And I don't, you remember this, Kayla, But there was oh, another actor. Vividly, I yeah. have horrible nightmares right. about the whole situation. So, so yeah, but I'm saying like the other actor and who who he had gotten COVID, and so anyway, uh, I think the the testing uh, pattern got thrown out of whack a little bit. But anyway, you had tested a couple days prior. And mm -hmm. then uh, you came in, and mm -hmm. we shot in uh, the chief's office, and uh, yes. we'll put up nice a nice tight contained space, yeah. very very small area. And it was, was kind of and there, there's heavy protocols because every the, all the crew was masked. We had a mm -hmm. ventilation system in there, and um, but the three of us were in there for the whole day just acting together, yeah. and um, so we we had had been doing that. You know everything seemed to be going okay. We had a great time. We had a very fun time shooting. We had a fantastic time. Yeah. We had a fantastic time. We did a lot of um, anti redheaded riffing. We did a lot which, of great stuff, which I believe might have been what knocked uh, the karmic. <laughs> scales out of whack. He's a redhead. Redheads are disgusting. She would not go out with a redhead. It's gross. Lucy doesn't like redheads. Who does? Red, nobody. They stink like crayons. And they breathe through their mouths. Their skin is see-through. You can see every vein, like a road map. Disgusting. It's like if you shine a flashlight from behind them, you see their whole skeleton. They can't go on the sun. They gotta use 10,000 SPF just to cross the street. How could you go to the beach with a guy? Like you put them out on the beach, they explode like a vampire. They had to have a parasol to walk outside. She wouldn't go out with those guys. And you're like totally dressed under an <laughs> umbrella, hiding Beady there. eyes. Ah! <laughs> you leaned heavy into the redhead, uh, gingy, gingy vibe. Yeah. And honestly, and fun. you got bit. And a lot of times I think you learned a valuable <laughs> lesson about picking on people. So, okay, so what so, happens is the next morning. Right. So Kaylor goes no, to work no, on another The night. That night. No, no. You, but you went to work on another show. Well, so you right? so, so here's what had happened. You had you had tested on another show the morning that you shot ours. You tested. And then yeah, you I came see. in and because the schedules had, had been switched, our COVID people weren't on set that day. And mm -hmm. so you walked in, we shot our scene. The next morning at like 6 a.m., I'm getting ready to go to set and you called me up. And your results from the day before's test for the other TV show had come in and you had tested positive for COVID. And so you called me up and you were like, holy shit, I just tested positive from a test I took yesterday. 
Mm-hmm. Right. And, and so that, you know, at the time it was, uh, you know, everyone was very sensitive to it. And so everything got shut down. And I had to go to American. So I was shooting that day, but it was crazy. I hadn't worked in a year because of the pandemic. Right, right. I book you guys. I book American Housewife off of. Oh, actually, I'd already played the character. This is what's even crazier. I had played the character and had aired, aired on American Housewife, and they called to bring me back. And so I was supposed to shoot Thursday. They said, you got to go test Tuesday. I was working with you guys. I said, well, I'm shooting on Tuesday. Can I come in early? So they said, yeah. So I went at 6 a.m., tested with them, then went straight to set. Right. And and shot all day with you guys. And then they, I got a text at like, I don't know, 1030, 11 o'clock. And I got home. My wife and I, oh, my God. It was the first day I'd worked in a year. And we had a glass of wine. We, we had a great so fucking time. Excited. We had a great time shooting that day. Such a great day. Yeah. It was like we were just coming out of the pandemic. We yeah. were like, holy cow, we're back. We're back, man. It's life. Had a glass of wine. My wife and I celebrated. And I was working again on Thursday. And then I had some more days with you the next week. And um, yeah, then it all, it all <laughs> fell apart. So you pop positive on that test. You mm-hmm. call Lemmy. And then our thing shuts down. Yeah. And because um, we had we hadn't had an exposure necessarily like that uh, at that up to that point, so we test everybody, um, mm-hmm. and um, you know we quarantined uh, us the actors. We quarantined the nine crew members that were in the room, and um, and the test came back, and I test positive, and one of the grips tested positive, or not? Yeah, one of the grips, the who, dolly grip, the dolly grip, who is behind a shield and a mask, yeah, tested positive, and then me. Yeah, who was sitting sitting shoulder to shoulder with you? Shoulder to shoulder. I, whole test, day. I was negative. I tested right. negative. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and so that you know, uh, like I was saying, I, this was in the early days, right? So then it was like, oh, bah, holy shit! You know, the you know we get positive tests, everything shuts down. So we shut everything down for like ten days, mm-hmm. and um, well, and uh, yeah, go ahead. But well, but this is a really harsh thing. I mean, this is a real <laughs> thing because yeah. We were one of the first shows shooting again. And so it was like, okay, every, everybody knows this is going to happen. Like somebody at some place is going to get shut down. Yeah. But you don't want to be the guy <laughs> you to don't bring the COVID. Typhoid Mary. You, you don't want to be, be typhoid <laughs> Jamie. And Which is what I'm still, you still invite me. It's been a couple of years and you still invite me to your parties as typhoid Jamie. Which uh, <laughs> I have to, you have to own it. There's not, you can, nothing you can do at well, some point. You're like, all right, man. Well, because here's the thing. It's like, it's all in the rear view mirror now. But at the time... This was probably one of the earliest. I mean, it was certainly the first time we gotten shut down. And yeah. for, for but it also was the early time people getting COVID. I mean, I know, Kayla, you had the same. I mean, at the time, I was, was afraid I killed. I was seriously afraid I killed Kevin. Yeah. I mean, I was, it was like, I, mean, I didn't for you sleep. you too, though. I mean, for I you was too. Torn. Oh, I know, dude. Please, I'm indestructible. I'm a freaking Highlander. <laughs> you can't kill me. Like, I wasn't. I'd already had it. I'd yeah. had it before anybody knew what it was. Like, and it, that one almost killed me. That's like, what that you was said. That's you think. I, I right. had it. Well, we had a flu. That went that ripped through the set. Yeah, yeah. Uh, of season two, at the end of the season, yeah, about a month before that December. I December might have got of, it there actually, of 19. because yeah. and it was I was like four o'clock in the morning, shivering on my bed, and then when I did get it again, I could feel the symptoms. I got oh yeah, I this I've had this before. Yeah. You know what's worse? America. You guys were actually super. You guys honestly were super cool. I it was. My punishment was is that my wife was working, luckily, and so I home while I was sick, I homeschooled two kids, yeah, a yeah. kindergartner, and it's, that was my punishment for, in second grade. <laughs> while I was like, you know, couldn't keep my head up. And the, American yeah. Housewife fired me. They fired me Jeez. because, and I'd already played the part on television. I was like, you guys can't wait seven days. They fired me, Jeez. and they replaced it. They Dick Sergeant Dick Yorked me. Holy shit! Like actually, the same character. But got a different actor for the same character. Same character, oh, a different character, different actor came in and played my part that I had already appeared on the show. So somewhere in IMDb, there's the same character with two actors playing it. Did he? It was look a like one day you, shoot. Was he? Was he similar looking to you? Redhead? I don't know. Not really. No, no, he wasn't. <laughs> no, it wasn't like a lookalike thing. It was kind of you know s- smart assy dickish guy who looks like uh, you know American Psycho well, the, 80s I mean, Wall the, Street guy. To your credit, though, I mean. I, I tell you this, and that must have been a hard fucking thing because it, it was a different mindset then. We had another ep- episode the same season, which you came back again, right? So you came back later, and that must have been. A, I mean, 
I felt for painful. you there because it was people were like, you know, word spreads. Oh, that guy had COVID, you know. Everybody and, knew. Yeah, and then you you came onto the set to shoot a, a later episode, and I give you credit. I mean, that was kind of a well, tough situation. By the way, yeah. also in in this thing, like you know, Jamie and I spoke a couple of times. I I, I don't want to speak out of turn here, but like Jamie was very upset. I know, I know he was. We talked oh, was all. Destroyed. We talked. I was, we, we texted. I was in a horrible it. depression for a while. Yeah, yeah, I was really. And also, you know, we look back now and we're like, you know. Should we have masked our kids for two years? I, I don't know. It's yeah. like, it's so, the, the questions are not for me to answer. Well, but at the yeah. time, we were in the mix of it. And, you know, pe- people died. People, people died. People and you died. didn't know. Like, I remember sitting in no. a fucking dark room alone. You can't be with your family. And you're just waiting to see if it gets worse because there's no medical Listen. treatment. There's no vaccine. There's and nothing. It, you're just you, sitting there. No. And you were pretty sick, actually. You got pretty you, uh, I got sick for like yeah. a day or two. I got, you know, I, I you know, hard chills, fevers, sweating. Yeah. yeah. Now, here, but it broke um, pretty quickly. Here was the funny thing on, on my end. I, you know, I did not have it. Yeah. But I had to be quarantined for 10 days because I was in the room sitting right next to you. Mm-hmm. And so the, <laughs> so the crew... But I, but at that house I lived in was very open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was all open. Yeah. And so the crew, you know, episode three hundred one was the quarantine episode. Yeah. Where we have the, it's like the monkey flu or something like that. Yeah. The, the monkey virus. And so, and we had built a set where we quarantine Ike Crystal, and it's you know it's the the storage room, and then there was a space under the door where we used to slide him his meals. Right, right, right. And so the crew brought that wall and that set of, and <laughs> that's they, true i remember they that built, video they built it in my house yeah and so <laughs> i was quarantined off in the actual the storage quarantine room from episode 301 and my wife would slide food under the door meanwhile i was just in there like playing video games <laughs> partying feeling great have 10 days off from work you know it was uh, I, had yeah. a, I had a good time honestly a different show it would have been way worse, but because you, it's you guys and, you know, still to this day, it's the most fun set I've ever been on. Like, it's just the blast. It's a blast. I felt terrible, but I also felt lucky that it was you guys because, you know, obviously you're going to take your ribbing and it was hard sure. when I went back to, to take, <laughs> even the night before, I remember talking to my wife going, oh, I got to go back. And she's like, I know, I know, I got, I'm not, it's going to be painful. I'm yeah. going to, you know. I'm walking in. I'm going to get destroyed. And uh, she goes, I know. And I go, okay. And so I walked in and everyone, everyone was pretty cool. I think I made more fun about it just to bring it out. But That's a lot good. of people were like, you could hear the way they were talking to me. I was like, oh, you totally know. Yeah. But you, you're not allowed to say because, of course, I go, look, I got COVID, man. It happened. Yeah. It, 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 yeah. yeah. In season three, uh, we had a, a, a um, when Lucy and Junior were uh, had gone missing. Yeah. Um, and you called him on the phone and yeah. he's got he's polishing his sword. Yeah. Which was your real military sword, wasn't it, Caleb? That is. I was a Navy lieutenant, and that's my real sword. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. One day I'll polish when Hannah brings a home boyfriends. But th- <laughs> that was that was a really funny moment between us, Kayla, because I remember uh, I was directing that episode, and, and you were trying to bring a little complexity and a little bit of a layer to the character. And I said to you, don't. <laughs> <laughs> True. That's verbatim. That's actually... <laughs> I, I said, just be... Uh, uh, a two-dimensional dick. Yeah, and that's a lot exactly of, what you said. A lot of my direction with Kaler is just be a bigger dick, and he's like, I, I don't know if I can. I'm like, how can I? Yes, just be a bigger dick. There's no, there's nowhere to go. There's nowhere to go but up. But he always when he used to work it. on my boys, that was it. They'd always just go, they go, just Kaler it up, Kaler it up, <laughs> Take it which up I guess much. was the same. Honestly, Steve, that was the best note I've ever gotten because here's the thing: as an actor, sometimes you are trying to go like you know in your brain, you're like. Oh, let's layer this. Let's put some debt. And then at the end of the day, you're like, um, here would be great. Why don't you just say the lines and then we'll all go to lunch? Why don't we try that approach? And you're like, yeah, yeah, well, I'll try that. And then the lines come out and you're like, yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah. All right, moving on. That's good. Got it. Um, all right. Jamie, we've gone long. You've been in eight episodes of ours. Excellent in every single one. Wonderful. So we, wonderful. We have finally forgiven you for uh, the COVID situation. <laughs> Did you really? Honestly, that means a lot to me. Long ago, long ago. I, I felt like you had. I, I did. Long I ago. really did. But I, uh, I still can't believe you didn't get sick. You were literally six inches away from I me, know. Steve. We got to put the clip up. Of well, him. the funny yeah. thing was also that I was like, I, I decided I didn't want to cover the two of us having dialogue with each other because you don't have time. So I just had you cheating all of uh, your yelling lines across the desk at Kevin, yeah. and I was just, just do it that way. <laughs> just direct all your yelling at him across the way there. It was a pivotal decision. So yeah, the smartest. Sm- 
smartest direction you've ever given. Yeah, all the COVID was going across the desk at Kevin, and I was, oh. you know, out of the hot zone. It's still, it's still all over that desk. That desk probably needs to get burned yeah. to the ground. Jamie Kaler, thank you for joining us. Love Kaler, always a pleasure. We'll see you soon. Are you kidding? You the again. pleasure's mine. Thank you so much. I mean, honestly, those epi eight episodes, it, it's been a joy. Um, so great. So I appreciate everything, and I love you guys. So thanks yeah. for having me. Thank you, buddy. Oh, okay. man. Kaler. My good friend. Good. My good new our friend. Our good friend, Kaler. My good new friend. Why didn't we talk to him more about being your new good friend? I don't know. Maybe Probably because we, we recorded that thing like last shot week? Shot this thing like three weeks ago. <laughs> what are you going to do? That we, might be it. We didn't know. We didn't know. Um, you want to watch Gag Reel? You know I want to watch a Gag Reel. You want to watch Gag Reel? Yeah. I put together the uh, Gag Reel for, for episode 412, episode uh, Kangaroo Court. Let's see it. Let's check it out. I, I, I prefer a dry white wine. Really? Yeah. Oh. Interesting. Okay, here we go. Everybody here. Anything to contribute? No, I prefer a dry white wine too. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Hey, loose. Loose. <laughs> oh, bless you. A chew. Your Honor, I demand a retrial. I was blatantly flamed for... Flamed. <laughs> beep, beep. Your Honor, this is horse shit. I demand a retrial. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Super Chunks. <laughs> That's your husband right there. Nickelberry saw you. Yeah, you were caught right again. <laughs> Nickelberry caught you red-handed. <laughs> Impossible. Nickelberry saw you, Ike. Okay, guys. Okay, guys. No, he's been using my shampoo. I can't believe you're screaming at me. Why are you screaming at me right now? You're no, wrong. Guys, guys. Not <laughs> rally, little yeah. stupid kangaroo. Hey, really? Guess what? I can do an Ike rally next time. Oh, and I'm going to use it on the floor. Well, it's a fucking shit accent. Don't swear. It's been uncharacteristically humid outside. This is why my hair looks like this. It's not because of any shampoo stuff, okay? You look like a wet rat. Oh, I'm so sorry, just one more thing. Uh, this is complete bullshit! You are full of shit right now! I'm sorry, Cap, but no way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe it's Mike Pendant. <laughs> <laughs> My mom's dead, Polanski. Ah, oh, I wondered why she tasted so horrible. <laughs> Past the expiration date. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about urine! Do you get it? Yeah, I got it. It's oh. my dad. It's my dad. <laughs> okay, I cut. <laughs> All right, there's your gag reel, man. That I love gag reels. Yeah, me too. Who so doesn't? Do I. All right. So do I. Always good things in the gag reel. I'm ready to be done with this episode. All right, we're good. I think we, yeah, we've gone on too long, right? We've we've babbled too long. As um, always. Uh, so you're happy with that episode? You did a great job directing. Um, I don't know that I would do anything differently. I love that episode. You did a fantastic episode. job. I, thank you. I love that. Yeah. That uh, It was a tricky episode, but uh, it was dramatic, and we had fun. So fun. And uh, and it's a to-be-continued. It is of. a to-be-continued, which we'll, we'll jump into yeah. uh, next. And by the way, here's I'm wearing the shirt from the Arts and Crafts Fair. That's right. That's right. Um, which is um, the next episode <clears throat> is uh, the Blood Drive episode, Bad yeah. Blood. And uh, the saga of Terry and Jerry continue. Uh, and the I guess it's now the three way between Eddie, Terry, and Jerry. Yeah, we'll see what happens in the next episode. Guys. Wow! All right, well, thank you everybody. Thanks for watching, and uh, thanks for watching Tacoma and Tacoma. Mm -hmm. Right, and we'll catch you next time on Tacoma uh, for the last episode of the season. Wow! Ooh, wow, we've really worked our way through this, haven't Ooh, we? We really have. Yeah. Almost there. All right, we'll see you soon, everybody.